All right, at the first spot this morning, and it's loaded. Tons of marks. Let's see if we can find out what's down there. Not real big. I think it's probably a Sierra. No. <laughs> big eye trolley. Not what I was hoping for, but something. These guys make good bait, but this guy's a little on the bigger side, and I don't really want to fish a bait right now. Big eye trolley. Not what we're looking for. We're gonna move up a little bit shallower. See if we can find something else. Yep, I'm on. Uh, on the popper, what is this? Oh, oh and it came off. I think that was a Sierra. Damn. Robert, were you on there? Yeah, yeah, I thought it was that, but I'm pretty sure I saw a bull mahi jumping out over here. Uh, I thought that was it, but it was a Sierra and it just popped off. Damn, it is. Oh, and we're on again on the popper. I don't think this is a mahi either, but very next cast. Oh. We're standing up out here in the open ocean on the lightning. I got something on. Two casts in a row with the popper. That's never a bad time. I see it. Oh, it's yellowfin tuna. <laughs> I'll take that. I will take that. Not the mahi I was hoping for, but I'm not gonna be mad about a yellowfin. <sighs> not a bad consolation prize. <laughs> Sick. Yellowfin tuna on the popper. Again, not what I was really hoping for, but I'm not gonna hear any complaints. That's for sure. Hit it like a freight train. And I was waiting for the jumps to start and they didn't, and I had a feeling maybe this is what it was. Phew! Not a bad start to the morning. Tuners! I swear I saw a mahi jump, man. Like, a, it looked like a nice bull. I like just saw the silhouette, and it was that, you know, big square head and pointy. But you know, just. No reason it shouldn't have been. Yeah, no, nah, man. I think that. Yeah. Oh, oh, thank you, bro. All right, sashimi sorted. Hell yeah! So what, you missed the Sierra though, too? Yeah, I lost it right at the boat. Damn. Decent one too. Yeah. Phew. Wow, the top water bites on. I ain't gonna put it away. It's just nice and calm out here. They can see that popper from a good ways off. Get back up here, kind of reset the drift. See what else we can get on it. So there's been a lot of action on the top right now. Um, Robert just had a Sierra on a popper. I think we saw a big bull mahi, and then on his third cast, he got a tuna. Um, so definitely, if you're willing to kind of be casting on the surface up in front of you, or troll some poppers out behind you. Um, probably a pretty good option. There's, there's definitely some tuna around.
in front of us here along the coast can hold really, really good fish. So, um, just kind of... Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just about to say, I just had a hit by a tuna. Uh, there's more. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I had a tuna hit and it missed. I just whipped it right back out, not very far. Another tuna on the popper. Oh golly! Oh I'm about to go swimming if I'm not careful. <laughs> yes, sir. Popper bites on fire this morning. Still looking for those mahi, but I'll take some yellowfin in the meantime. <laughs> yee yee! Oh! It's about the same size. Yeah, it's too. I had one explode on it. It looked bigger. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, they out here. Not how I meant to do it, but that worked. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's my second one, man. Dude, put a popper on. Throw the popper. That doesn't suck. Next little flick out there, and I saw several with this guy. They're running around here in numbers. And that's on this. This little popper. Nothing fancy. Just getting it done here on this calm morning. Phew. Same class. Not a monster, but we'll take it. And us off to the ponga. Get that popper back out there. My man Harold here, back for his third trip. He was coming. Yes, sir. Stab it in the head, man. He was coming out here to get a popper, and I told him just go ahead and troll a diver on the way out. They'll hit that too. And there it is. Take your time, make one good shot. There you go. Yeah. Sweet. Have you got tuna here before? I don't think so, man. There you go, first yellowfin tuna from a kayak. On the diver too, that's sweet. Great job, man. Again, there's more. Oh no, and I... Oh, I had it and it came off the gaff and then the gaff grabbed the line and I just, ah, uh, and the line broke. Now I gotta tie another leader while there's tuna blitzing all around. Damn it. Wow, that's unfortunate. Series of events there. All right, let's get retied. Get right back into them. I'm hooked up on the diver. Well, I lost that popper. Dakota said he's got another one for me. But in the meantime, I figured, well, I'll throw out something. Just threw out a diver, because Harold just caught a tuna on the diver, and I've had it out for three minutes, and pretty sure this is a tuna. Hoo-hoo. On fire. Tuna are on fire right now. Yep, that's what I got. Another one. Uh, some on the diver, it doesn't really seem to matter. That was a huge matter right in front of you, like 20 feet off the kayak. That, was, that just smoked the tuna. That was like a good, probably 200 pound black marlin. Oh my gosh. I don't know if y'all heard that. Dakota said you just saw a marlin. Right, and when I turned around. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I caught it right there on that second jump. Man, that was I heard that, dude. I was wondering what that was. Damn, damn, yeah. Definitely a black mile and solid, clean as can be from the side. Holy crap. In here eating these these tuna, man. Shit, if we catch a small one, I'm gonna we'll put it out live. See what happens. Yeah, 100%. Any little tunas now. We got, I think, enough for dinner there. Let's we'll try to catch a mile. Yeah, I got another tuna on the gaff right now. Roger, yeah, coming to you. <laughs> Yeah, folks, tuna are here in force, and uh, I heard a huge splash, I was wondering what it was, 
he said uh, about a 200 pound black marlin which for here is actually a pretty small one uh was jumping crushing like crashing into these tuna tuna is great marlin bait and now if we catch a small one i'm gonna put this thing out live this one obviously a little too late he's having a bad day that kind of changes everything he said it was like 20 feet off of harold's kayak i mean marlin right here in the middle of us crazy it doesn't matter yeah I've, I, I trolled the diver for 20 seconds yeah. gotta hit like yeah they're here they're here in, only thing is the hooks are a little rusty. I don't care. He's pretty well bled. I got him in the gills. Set the hooks good with them. Yeah, the other one I gaffed it and I don't know. I think the gaff ripped through. I just had it around the edge and then the line was in there and he freaking took off and snap. I was like. I, I did that with his Sierra. I like take the jig out of its mouth, not realizing the Sierra already cut the line. Just throw the jig. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then proceed to get bit by this year. Yeah, of course. Good. I gotta get Jim. Man, I hooked the I hooked the one that broke off. I put I hooked it right in front of him, and I'm showing him like how to pop it. He's just he's not really doing it right. I need. I'm trying to get over it. I was trying to troll over to him, and then yeah. caught another fish. Dang it. But yeah, he just he just needs a little direction on that popper. Yeah. Because I mean, I hooked one right in front of him, and he didn't hook up because he's like kind of just reeling it. Which I mean, I told him like could work. I know you like to do it fast. Yeah, I just I told him to just nice good pop, pause it, like get a good form and just splash some water and they'll they'll come find it. But then I looked over and that's not really what he's doing. So good. Amigo, no, la rapada también. No se importa. Sí, pásame. Amigo, por el video. Yeah, I heard that splash. Marley, it jumped out. Hell uh, yeah! Very good. Great job, Jimmy. I was just telling him I was trying to get over to you to, to talk you through the popper. Sounds like you got it figured out, man. Great job. Congrats. All right, action's still on. Jimmy's hooked up. Looks like he's got a tuna at the kayak. My man Harold over here, he's hooked up at the same time. We're doubled up. I was just pedaling back over the spot after catching those two tunas back to back. Oh no! Right when I started recording, man, that's my fault. Oh, did you see what it was? No, don't have a clue. Man. It's probably another tuna fighting the same. Yeah, probably. Gosh, they're thick here right now. We got a whale right here, guys, right between the pond. Got Harold right between, yeah, Harold, Jimmy, between you and me, there's a couple of them. There he is. Couple whales in here coming right through the group. Looks like a mom and a baby, maybe. One's much bigger than the other. Got the kayakers in there. Made the trip worthwhile right there. <laughs> yep, oh. I've seen the tail up in the air. Yes, sir. That means uh, that means they just do. We probably won't see them again. They they can hold their breath a long time. Yep. popper again. Can't tell what it is. I don't think this is a tuna. Oh, maybe it is. Coming up on slack tide, it's slowed down a little bit the last 15 minutes or so. But Harold's hooked up big right now. Dakota's over with him. I don't think this, yeah, it might be a tuna. Hard to tell. I don't think it's real big. It is a tuna. <laughs> they are still biting even at almost slack tide. And this is a different popper after I lost that last one. 
don't seem to care right now. Oh God. It's a pretty nice one. <sighs> Got him. <sighs> Got him right in the gills, right where we want to gaff it. So this starts bleeding out. <sighs> Whoo wee, we're gonna be eating good tonight, folks. Tuna on the popper, bites on fire. All about that class, all about that size, which this time of year, that's pretty standard. We get big ones in the dry season, but here in the rainy season, they're typically these smaller kind of schooly tuna, so to speak. Uh, but I ain't mad about that, especially when they're hitting the popper. Man, he was not going anywhere. All three of the hooks on this treble are in them. Man, I might mess this hook up trying to get him out. There we go. Did mess the hook up a little bit. Hoo wee! Yeah, folks. Yellowfin tuna. Still bleeding them. Let them bleed in the water here. All right, we're gonna try to put this guy out of his misery and get this popper right back out of here because there's more. There are more. These tuna ain't gonna catch themselves. And that actually just killed him, but now his reflexes are kicking in. He just spasmed. He's dead. With these tuna, they never stop swimming their entire lives. That tail is always kicking, and so even uh, in their life, that tail's still kicking. Hell yeah, guys, nice work. Uh, Dakota, whenever you get done with all that, no rush, but uh, I got a tuna in my boat too. They're still hitting the popper over here. The bait is so thick below me right now that my boat thinks that I'm in uh, 16 feet of water. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Woo wee! Alright, we're gonna put him there. Man, there's so many fish below me. I may drop the little bucktail and see if we can't pick up a, a live bait. There's freaking marlin running around. I can't tell what's down there, but whatever fish is down there, it's so thick my 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 sonar thinks it's the bottom. It's so dense. It's saying it's 42 feet here, it's more like 115 feet here. But 40 feet down, there's a giant bait ball tightly packed together. Oh, I might be on. Oh, no. but I don't mind getting a live bait and kind of fishing for something else. We've got a bunch of tuna in the cooler now. I'll let the clients keep having fun with that. I'm gonna see what else we can get into, see if I can't figure out another pattern for them. That's basically on days like today when we got one support ponga, there's only four clients in the kayaks. The other kayaks, or the other clients are in one of the other pongas fishing with Jaden, running around, fishing out of the boat. And so they don't really need my help. And so instead of uh, running around trying to film them and stuff, I'm just slower. And so Dakota's got that covered. Instead, I'm kind of just trying different techniques. I've been jigging, using the bucktail, throwing the popper, trolling the diver, trying to figure out kind of what's happening. That way I can let these guys know, hey, you can try this, you can try that. I just got bit on this. And so that's kind of my job today. I'm essentially just switching up techniques constantly, scouting different areas, trying to figure out where the bite's at. And, I got that tuna on, oh, and I just got a hit. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I just dropped a little bucktail trying to catch a bait and I got a feeling this might be another elephant tuna. They're just, it doesn't matter what you drop right now. That's the only conclusion I've... <laughs> Good morning. We out here, y'all. <laughs> Hammering them. The elephant tuna from the kayak. I think this will be number seven on the morning for me. I mean, the clients have all caught one at this point, at least one. Yeah, yeah. I'd say the bite's on this morning, at least for the tuna. We've seen mahi, we've seen a 200 pound marlin eating these tuna that we're catching. A lot of life out here today, a lot of action. Oh. Goodness gracious! <laughs> it's not even that big of a tuna, this is just my light setup. Yeah, but sir, you did 
not call that out on the radio? I gotta tune in here. <laughs> this is on the baby bucktail. It's like, oh, there's bait down there. I'm gonna catch a bait. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't think that's bait. Marlin bait, baby. This is fun. This is so much fun. I mean, it doesn't matter what I drop. This is on the bucktail. I've caught now a tuna on the popper, on the diver, on the bucktail. Hell yeah. Everything I've got in the boat has caught a tuna now. This thing was just at the boat and he just screamed off 100 yards. Like, Harold just got a nicer one. Yeah. He broke his PB, as he was saying. Sick. <laughs> well, he broke his PB twice this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I've only caught two, so I guess this breaks my PB. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, I count. <laughs> he's, he's the best. I love that guy. I was thinking he hadn't caught a tuna, and I asked him he caught the first one, he's like, I guess I have it. Yeah. Another one off the bucket list. I was <laughs> like, man, I love this guy. Yeah. Harold here is his third trip with us, and I guess him and Jen, Jennifer, uh, follow each other on social media, and she told him, hey, when you get there, give Rob, Rob a big old kiss on the cheek for me. Uh, and I did not know this, and Harold got here, I gave him a hug, great to see you, and he said, hold on, and he grabbed my face and kissed me on the cheek. Jen got a kick out of that, she didn't think he'd actually do it. Another tuna. They're hitting everything today. There we go. Yes, sir. In La Cañita. Should have heard this thing screaming, dude. I, I bet. I was waiting to see smoke coming out of the reel. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> On the little bucktail, just trying to catch bait. The tunas won't let me, won't give the bait a chance to hit it. He's the smallest one of the day, but on that reel, that was fun. Yeah, Amigo, okay. Cinco a dos? Oh, no, no, no. Cinco tres, cinco tres. Cinco tres? Okay, okay. We don't have room. Ganas. We. Ah, uh, full, y'all. We need to. Yeah, if you wanna. Holler at Jaden when he wants to Oh, yeah. Got a few tunas in the boat today? Yeah, that one's a little better, huh? Definitely. All of these. these They're all like, solid. These aren't footballs. No. They're closer to 15, 20 pounds. Yeah. There's some um, solid ones mixed in for sure. You got any more little bucktails? Um, I should, yeah. This one's just running out of bucktail. Yeah. Tres más grande por mí. Say, sí, yo tengo cinco en el kayak, amigo, como un hombre. <laughs> Las lanchas son por mujeres y niños. <laughs> Guy and I got a little competition going on. He's saying his are bigger. I'm saying I caught more and I'm in a kayak like a real man. Huh? Oh, what the f***? The deepest one is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was it recording for the hit? <laughs> it's on the bigger jig. <laughs> and it feels like another tuna. Golly. Oh, oh he's coming at me. Oh, did he come off? No, he's just coming at me. <laughs> Name a better sound. I'll wait. <laughs> I don't think he's that big either. Oh, it's not a, it's not a tuna. Sierra mackerel, nice one, nice one, really nice one on the jig. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, something a little different. Nice Sierra mackerel on the jig. This jig's been killing it this trip. I think I've caught 10 or 12 roosters on it this trip. And there we go. Nice Sierra mackerel. Wow. Oh, now Harold's on again. I mean, just nonstop, you guys. Golly. It's on fire today. Phew. Goodness gracious, that runs, those runs. I thought this was just going to be another tuna. And I saw Sierra and I knew it had to be a big one. That is a big one. 
Really nice here, mackerel. On the jig, too. Look at that. Whew. Check out the teeth on that guy. Uh, oh, speaking of, let's not get bit by him. Uh, pretty lucky you didn't cut me off. This, this has kind of become my lucky jig this trip. We've got no paint left. In fact, there's white paint underneath the normal paint. Now even that's going away. It's going to be all just lead soon, but fish don't seem to mind, obviously. Yeah, bro, stud Sierra on the on the bigger jig, the jig that's been slaying the roosters all week. I thought maybe it was one, and then it started screaming offline. I thought, oh, it's another tuna, and nope, big old Sierra. Man, what a morning. What a morning. It's 11 o'clock. Whoo-wee. Get this yeah, man, you got lucky that that thing didn't take a good jig. I literally just said that to the camera. Like, man, I've been saying I'm gonna lose this jig to a Sierra, and this thing very well could have bit me off, but right in the corner. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, man, put it, sleep with it under my pillow. They're still there. Oh. Something right on the bottom. small. It might be a bait. They're still playing with a tuna. What is this? Some kind of a medium sized jig around the bottom. Oh, sick. <laughs> hey, I got a little Almaco. <laughs> Yeah. Man, this guy could be good bait, but I'm gonna go ahead and toss him back. These are one of the trophy fish that we fish for out here as Almaco Jack. Biggest one I've caught here is 72 pounds. So we'll toss him back and let him get bigger. So the client can come back soon and catch him when he's when he's giant. Dakota's on a tuna. <laughs> It's yellowfin tuna day, all you can catch. Free 99. Oh. Something else. It's not every drop, it's every other drop. Oh no! Oh, something just been right there. Ah! It came off and then something hit it. I saw it on the surface. Local. Man, I don't know what I just lost. That was not a tune. That was something else. <sighs> Can't land them all, I suppose. That's why they call it fishing. And not catching. I hate that saying. People only say it to you when you've had a bad day. But that is not the case today. It's been on fire. Dakota's on. Yeah, bud! <laughs> oh, Dakota's hammering the tuna over there. One after another. I've seen a reel at three, just like in my last three drops. I'm really trying to catch anything else. It's hard to, hard to weed through all these pesky yellow fan. Really just thinking about how much, how many fish we're gonna have to fillet when we get back. Good problem to have. Hey mom, watch this. <clears throat> oh, <huh>. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> It's cool, huh? <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Automatic, y'all. Saw a tuna jumping out of the water. I knew it would only take one cast.
yellow fin tuna yellow fin tuna <sighs> not not the biggest of the day but they all taste good oh gosh Whew. yes sir uh, I'd say we're on them, ladies and gents. Yeah, let's go to the top in the panga. Again, I'll kind of... Oh, oh gosh. Oh. Please stop. Kind of... Really? Kind of gave up messing with these guys a little while ago. Just trying to catch different stuff and... Uh, but when you see them jumping out in front of you, can't help but throw the popper. You just can't not, you know what I mean? Put him out of his misery. And there we go. And that, ladies and gents, is tuna number, I don't know, maybe 10. But uh, where I come from, it's called dinner. That's dinner. Man, a little bit of blood in the boat. Oh, wee. Pretty worn out, y'all. There's a thick school of bait, like 15 feet below the kayak right now, and I think that's what these tuna are gorging on. It's really high up in the water column. Popper, I really, I don't think it imitates what they're eating, right? Like, I don't think they're eating anything as big as that popper. They're eating smaller baits. But what the popper does imitate is like action, right? It imitates like another tuna psh, busting on the surface. So it attracts in other tuna. And when they come in to investigate the splashing, they see that popper and maybe it's not exactly matching the hash that they're eating, but looks appetizing, looks easy. And uh, as you can see, called that one, they will crush it. Man, it's all the tuna you want to catch today, y'all. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly kind of over it. Good problem to have. You've got too many yellowfin kayak, uh, tuna in the kayak. Uh, that's a good day, good problem to have, but yeah, I really kind of want to catch anything else. And so I had switched and abandoned the bopper for the last two hours, dropping the jig, caught the nice Sierra. Um, but gosh, when you see, like I said, you see him jumping, how can you not? You can't not. And I did. And there's another one. We were able to, able to get a hold of one of the other pongas because our cooler was literally overflowing. They had tuna, they were just keeping in the shade, keeping them wet for like 30 minutes. But they were able to call over one of the other pongas. They came, we loaded their cooler up with tuna. And uh, so now we got some more space. And we're gonna load up on it. And that way if fishing's tough, we can eat tuna the rest of the week. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, God. This is after he's been stabbed in the head and had his throat slit. It's just reflexes, violent reflexes. Pong is coming up, we'll pass this guy off. Phew. <laughs> oh my gosh, something hit the jig, oh, so, something hit the jig right on the surface and missed, and then I looked up and I saw tuna free swimming under the surface, so I just pitched the jig out and was ripping it back across the surface and got smoked. There's a bunch more below me. <laughs> I've never casted the jig, sight casted the jig at a fish and got it to eat. That's a new one. It don't matter today, you can do no wrong with these tuna. This is the jig that caught the Sierra earlier and I've been dropping it down and not catching anything and I just sight casted at tuna. I could see them clear as day with these Revo sunglasses, super nice lenses. Been loving these. I could tell they were tuna. <laughs> and I just pitched the jig out at them and just ripped it. It was like skipping across the surface. And that thing smoked it. Man, y'all, I'm beat. This is a workout today. 
There he is. Uh, yellowfin tuna. Pretty nice one. He ain't done. Seems like every time they see the boat, they run off one more time. The roosters do the same thing. Where you going, bud? Nowhere. <laughs> All day long. Tuna, tuna, tuna. Too many tuna. No such thing. That's a good time there, I don't care who you are. I have my hook back, sir. It's on that jig. That's just got everything. This trip is so good. Just everything's wanting that jig. We have been catching tuna basically whenever we want, and even sometimes when we don't want, since about eight this morning. It's now one o'clock. I'm literally trying not to catch tuna, but I mean, when I see them free swimming, how am I gonna not just pitch the jig at them? Always good time. Drop this guy for the panga. I think we got our second cooler is, is approaching full capacity with tuna. With a couple nice bonus Sierras. Uh, it'll be good, ladies and gentlemen. Yee yee! I'll come drive in a second, or are you coming this way? 10-4, buddy. I don't want to wear out Gaio's shoulder. I'll come over there. Roger. Oh, hit it on the way down. I thought that that seemed too quick for it to have hit the bottom. Something hit the jig on the way down. Anytime you're dropping the jig down, if, if it's the line stops coming out and you're like, there's no way it's on the bottom yet. It's because something picked it up, and that's exactly what happened. As soon as I closed the bail, I was on. This doesn't really feel like a tuna unless it's hooked weird. What are you? It might be a jack. He's not happy about it. Tons of fish below me. The screen is loaded. And I mean, my jig didn't even get down the bottom. I guess that makes sense. Might be a big school of Jack Revol down there. Doesn't feel massive. It's not tiny. I'm pretty, sh pretty sure it's a Jack. Something else different today. I see color. Looks silver to be expected. It's jack shaped. Yes. <laughs> He's not tiny. Don't you do it. I want that jig back more than I want you. Yes, sir. The jig that catches everything strikes again. <laughs> Pretty solid, Jack. On the jig. Man. Oh, man. I'm worn out. Should not have been that hard to get this jack in, honestly. What a day. What a day. Jake's got some good mojo. Dakota was joking I should put it in a shadow box, hang it on the wall in my casita back at Los Buzos. It has seen better days, but the fish don't seem to mind. They're still eating it. Uh. See you, buddy. Thanks for the tug. Whew. Yeah, I'm whipped. We're here at the end of the day. A little bit of rain, cloud cover now. Fish still bite. I'm running, running out of gas, I think. <laughs> but we out of here. Let me get up there, 
Let's see if we can't find some good marks again. Slimy buggers. Out of time for today. Got about an hour and 15 minute ride back, and we got some fish to clean. A lot of fish to clean. Whew, I'm whipped. See you guys back at the lodge. Yee -yee. Hey. All right, guys, what a day! What a day! Non stop action. Just got sick of catching fish, really. I'm, I'm exhausted. Everyone's exhausted. So good. Got three coolers full. Good and Jaden already getting a full in. I'm about to be right behind them. Look at that. Ran out of cooler space. The other boys in the pond got into some fish too. Massive rainbow runner, biggest I've ever seen here. Big yellow snapper. There's an African pompano down there somewhere. Some more snapper. We got on them today. Loins. Loins for days. Loins for days. Good day fishing basically just means extra work for us now that we got back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going for speed, not for uh, saving every scrap. James, it looks like a mahi boy. The Sierra was so big. Second tray. Yeah, we're gonna get finished with all these fish cleaning and then go clean ourselves and we'll catch you guys at dinner. What a day, what a day. So the fastest and easiest way to clean a tuna, which notice I did not necessarily say the best way, you end up leaving behind a little bit of meat between the ribs, but we got so many and it's late. So the easiest way is basically Start here behind the pectoral fin, kind of at an angle up towards the head. Slice down, pull it up to the head. I'm gonna turn my knife and I kind of follow the back. Follow the spine, just kind of get it started. Essentially making like a guide. Turn it around, cut into the tail. Turn the knife. And just follow the ribs all the way up and boom. Nice, clean, tuna loin, beautiful. Leave behind a little meat, but I think we're gonna be all right. I don't think we're gonna go hungry. And then from there, we're gonna slice here down along the bloodline and flay it off the skin out to the side. Boom. Easy peasy. We're going for speed, not style points or anything. Tuna going down tonight. Caught so many, I knew it'd be dinner. Doing this high heat, low time. It's gonna be raw in the middle still. Super simple seasoning, salt, pepper, garlic, a little bit of citrus. Nothing fancy when the tuna's this fresh. Man, it's gonna be good. We got Miss Erica, head chef tonight. <laughs> she loves being filmed, she's loving that. Look at that, already cooking these things will not be on here long. She'll flip them, keep it rolling. And that's it. Put them on there, waited about a minute, go already flipping them. Super hot, super quick, takes no time flat. The only way to cook tuna is barely. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Come on, Yaritza. Delivering the goods. Yum. I think we're having tuna a few ways tonight. Oh yeah, gracias. Yeah. Look at this. Cheers. Man. Tuna. 
avocado. It's got a little spice, a little heat. Fantastic. That's so good. And we're done, folks. That's all there is to it. As simple as it gets. Seared tuna. Quick, super hot. Done. See that? Still raw in the middle. That's how you want it. Fun to catch, delicious to eat. We're about to be eating good. This stuff right here, y'all, I don't know what is in this sauce, but that's the magic right there for the tuna. So good. Please them. Sweet. Sweet. Oh, yeah. We got fried rice and vegetables. What a meal. Oh, it's gonna be good. Man, Harold helped catch some of these tuna today. Nueve. Quiero, quiero cuatro. No, mentira. Dos. Posible dos y un chiquito. Si hay, no, no. Okay. Sear tuna taste test. Not necessary, I already know. Let's try a little bit of sauce. Look at that. Uh, and it's funny because once I grab my thumb to film this, you always try to Cannot go wrong. So fantastic. What a great day catching these things, now eating these things. We're going to go ahead and enjoy this. Uh, they also